I'll be showing 12 new features in OneNote. There's so many good updates, I put on my OneNote cape. So we'll show modern desktop updates, web, inclusive and accessible updates, iOS, and lots more. So let's get started. The first new feature is a modern user experience in OneNote, a big facelift. So you can see it's got a nice set of rounded corners. This matches the rest of Office now. It matches the Windows 11 experience. Nice purple across the top if you're using a colorful purple theme like I am. You also have the add page button now at the top of your pages. And by the way, I've moved my pages over to the left hand side. You can see some of the section colors have been updated. And if you drop the notebook picker, I'm gonna pin this, you can see new notebook colors, a little bit brighter. You'll also see that when I expand this, this is now on the left side, the expand and collapse, and the sections look a little more like the Windows 10, the UWP app. So this is now coming in sync with the web app, iPad, Windows 10 app, it all looks much more similar. Another one of my favorite updates with the new user experience is how we show unread content. So you'll see here now, instead of this being bold, there's a nice little dot to tell that there's new content. Even on the section itself on OneNote Tips, you'll see a dot and best shortcuts. So if I go into OneNote Tips, you'll see that unread highlighting, it's still green here, so I can see where the new content is, but all these little dots indicate that there is new content. So that's an update that is more accessible, and I think it's actually much easier to distinguish than that bold previously. The last modern update I'll show with the user experience is if I go to the upper right and click here, I can choose a simplified ribbon as one new option, we'll choose that, this keeps it just one line, much more compact, and again, very similar to the Windows 10 app and how that looks, and other Office apps also have this simple single line ribbon. So now OneNote Desktop has this as well. I can also drop this down, then I have things like full screen mode and show tabs only mode. These have existed, but they're all in one little drop down. So if you wanna just have the tabs right here, and then I can go full screen just like I could before, and go back again. And I'll go back to classic ribbon mode. The second new feature is that dictation is built natively into OneNote Desktop. I'm a big fan of this. So on the Home tab, you're gonna see a Dictate button. It used to be you would have to download a Learning Tools add-in. This is the modern dictation that is similar across the rest of Office. So I'll click Dictate. Now I am dictating, and this is so much fun, period you'll see that there is a dictate little UI that's popped up here. I can drag this around the page and I can put it wherever I want. I click that to stop the dictation. I can click settings and we have many, many different options. I have so many different languages to choose from. I have a bunch right here at the top and there are preview languages as well. We've recently added 15 new preview languages and there are over 40 dictation languages to choose from. You can also enable auto punctuation if you want. I had it turned off. And you can also filter sensitive phrases. So if somebody's swearing, it'll star out all the bad words. And I'll hit save. There will be many improvements coming to dictation in the future, making it more natural and being able to do lots of different commanding. But right now, dictate has been rolling out into the insider rings and it's gonna be rolling out broadly very soon. The third new feature is a more cohesive and improved sharing set of capabilities in OneNote Desktop. If I go to the upper right, there's the share button. And if I drop this down, all my choices are now nicely put into one place. So if I wanna share the entire notebook here, I click it. And this is the modern Office sharing UI, just like all the other apps, just like in Teams, just like in SharePoint. We'll close this. I have other options to copy the link to the notebook. Here's a link to my notebook. I can drop this down. I can choose if I wanna make it read only. I can give it to people with existing access. And again, all the same other options that I would normally have in other Office apps. So I wanna copy this link. I could paste it in the mail. I'll just paste it here, but that's a link to open the notebook. Go back up here one more time. I can email a copy of a page. So single click, that'll pop up Outlook. That brings up a mail and pops my OneNote page right into it. And lastly, I go here to share and I can choose to manage access. This is where I can control who has access to all the different aspects of this notebook. And we'll close this. You still have the same sharing options in other parts of the OneNote UI. So I can still email a page right here on the Home tab. If I go into the File menu, I can still control sharing of my notebook. But this just pulls everything into one nice little dropdown so I don't have to go to different places in the user interface to find these important sharing options. The fourth new feature is the long requested ruler. 
it has finally come to OneNote Desktop. I'm going to go to the Draw tab and I'm going to click on Ruler. And there's the ruler. I can click it and drag it around. I can spin it and rotate it, put it any degrees that I want. In this case, I'm going to click on the red pen and now I can just draw a straight line really easy. Maybe draw a straight line on the other end. You can do all sorts of things with your ruler to draw much straighter lines. This is great for all sorts of inking scenarios. It's also great just for mouse scenarios. It's pretty hard to draw a straight line with a mouse. I click the button again to make the ruler go away. The ruler is now rolling out to OneNote Desktop. The fifth new feature is that modern inking tools have been brought into OneNote Desktop. I go to the Draw tab here and you're going to see Rainbow Ink, oh that's amazing, and all of the other types of modern pen tools that we've brought into the other desktop office apps. So now I can get Rainbow Ink and I can draw my nice little smiley face. Hey, there's my rainbow face, that's beautiful. But we can also do things like add pens. I'm going to add a pen here and I can choose what type. We also have Galaxy Ink. Our friend Ian Mikitel, for those who know him, he's the father of Rainbow Ink and Galaxy Ink. I can control the thickness. I can also right click on a pen and say move left. So I want to move it left. I want to move this over here. Or if I want to move it back again, I can also delete pen. So right click and choose delete pen. The sixth new feature is ink to shape. I'm on the draw tab here and I'm going to click on ink to shape and I'm going to draw a slightly ugly triangle here and look at that, it's converted to a beautiful triangle. I'll go back and I'm going to choose a nice red pen and I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. This time I'm going to draw a pretty ugly circle. Oh, it looks much better when it's like that. And lastly, got to do rainbow. We'll make a rainbow square. There we go. We'll make a rainbow connection. Oh, it's a beautiful square. So we now have these ink to shape features that make it really easy to draw nice shapes. Those are just a few of the latest inking features. As announced in the blog just a week ago, a lot more is coming into OneNote Desktop. This includes things like ink replay, the ability to synchronize inking with transcription as you're taking notes, and a host of other inking improvements. You're going to see a ton of ink innovation coming to OneNote Desktop in the coming months all through the end of the year and beyond. The seventh new feature is rule lines in OneNote for the web. So I've got a page open here in OneNote for the web. If I go to the view tab here, there's now a rule lines button. So I can drop it down and I can choose these nice lines. I could make grids. I could do really big grids, lots of different options here. And if I want to turn them off, I just hit none. Now you have parity with OneNote Desktop and the OneNote UWP app. The eighth new feature is OneNote Live Captions, which fuses OneNote together with Microsoft Translator. Microsoft Translator is a free app on iOS, Android, or web, and it allows you to speak into it and it will real-time translate in over 100 languages. So the scenario here is Professor Mike has Translator and he starts a new session, and I'm going to choose English as my language. What that does is it generates a join code and a QR code. And you can see the join code here, the arrow pointing to it. So Professor Mike is going to take this join code and give it to his class. Let his class see the join code so they can join up OneNote and get all those live captions. Let's see how this works. I'm here in OneNote for the web and I'm signed in as a student. I'm going to go to the View tab and I will click on Live Captions over on the right. This opens up the Live Captions pane and this is where I'm going to enter my translator join code. So there it is and I've set my language to English, there are over 100 languages that you can translate into, but we'll keep it simple with English to start. And I'll click Join. Now as I'm talking, the professor, the professor's talking, all these captions are coming through. And you can see them streaming in real time. Now while those captions are coming in, as the student, I can still take notes. So I'm adding my notes, the professor's talking, and it's still captioning. Now let's say he's talking really fast and I'm like, whoa, I'm getting overwhelmed. I'm going to hit pause. I can pause the caption stream. Now I maybe want to highlight some things. So I might select some pieces right here and we'll drop down the highlighter, choose yellow. And now I'm just going to click and select some words to highlight. And I'm going to highlight a little part right here as well. I can go and change the highlighter color. In this case, I'll choose green, highlight some more. I can make the text bigger. So I might make the text a little bit bigger. Now the professor is continuing to talk while I've been highlighting and I might get worried that I missed a bunch of stuff. 
if I hit resume, everything gets caught back up. So all the captions that the professor was saying while it was paused are right there. Now, in addition, when I'm done, I can have all of these saved as a transcript automatically. Over on the left, you're gonna see this transcript section. And what happens is every new session saves the entire transcripts full of notes automatically. So I'm gonna pause this here and I'm gonna close and I'll go back to transcripts and click on this. Now you see that transcript session. It also captures the text and the highlights that I made in yellow and in green. At the top, there's a date and the transcript code that you use for the translator session. So everything is stored automatically. Now let's say I'm a student who speaks a different language. I'm gonna to go to the View tab and I'm gonna click Live Captions and maybe I speak Japanese and my professor speaks English. So I'm gonna drop the captions language. In this case, I will choose Japanese. Now, as my professor is speaking, I'll hit Join. Everything that's coming through that he speaks in English is translated in the live captions into Japanese automatically. And we support over 100 languages. So this is a very inclusive note-taking experience and it is rolled out in OneNote for the web. It's rolled out in OneNote for Mac, OneNote for iPad, and OneNote for Windows 10. We hope to bring it to OneNote desktop later in 2022. The ninth new feature is improvements to OneNote dictation in the web. So I'm on the home tab in OneNote for the web and I'm gonna click the dictate button. Down at the bottom, you will see the new UI, and it is very similar to what you saw in OneNote desktop, period. I've clicked stop on dictation. Very similar, I have a new settings option here. I will click this, and you're gonna see that same experience as you saw in OneNote desktop. All the same new languages, I scroll down, you can see all these preview languages. I can turn enable auto punctuation on, and there's that filler sensitive phrases option as well, and I'll click save. This is rolling out to Office Insiders right now. This will be rolling out broadly very soon. The 10th new feature is a small but important one, and that is the menu item to open up your web app in desktop has changed. So if I go to editing here, you're now gonna see open in desktop app. That used to be at a top level toolbar that has been moved under this editing menu. And when I drop this, I can change it to be view only or editing, and now there's an open in desktop app as well. The 11th new feature is a new OneNote iOS widget. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a long press and choose edit home screen. And now in the upper left, choose the plus. And now I'm gonna search for OneNote. And hey, there's a OneNote widget, tap that. You have three options, recent notes, swipe the other way, fuller recent notes, and then a quick capture plus recent notes. That's the one that I'm gonna add. Now I've got some options here. I'm gonna move this a little higher in my list so I can always access it. So your options here are new note, you can do inking, you can make a list, photo, and audio. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose photo so I can take a photo of something and insert it right into a new OneNote page. So I'll tap photo, pulls up the camera, take a photo, tap done, and now I've got that page. We'll switch back. This time I'll try an audio note. So tap on audio, it pulls up recording audio. I can record something. When I'm done, I'll just give a little title of my note, call it audio note, and we'll flip back again. I could also just open up an existing page, a recent page. I'll tap dictation in the web in this case, and it pulls up that page. So there's a bunch of cool stuff you can do with this OneNote widget. It's a huge time saver when it is on your iOS homepage. I encourage you to install it and try it out. The 12th new feature is that Reflect check-ins now work in a OneNote class notebook that lives inside of Teams. Reflect is a well-being app that we have that lets educators very quickly and easily check in with their students and reflect, whether it's learning or social emotional state. So what we have now is the ability in a class notebook for the educator to add that check-in. I'm signed in as the educator in Language Arts and I'm gonna go into my class notebook. And we'll maximize this open up the navigation pane and let's go into the content library. And I'll go here. Now here's a page that I want to distribute to my class. I will click on the class notebook tab here. And first I'm going to open up reflect. Now here are the different options I have. What would you like the students to reflect on? Their confidence to succeed, their motivation to learn, understanding of the content, etc. So I'll click on understanding of the content and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the page and I'm just going to click where I want this check-in to go. So we'll go right here. Now I'm gonna choose add check-in to page, click that. 
This adds that reflect check-in. So how well do you understand what is a claim? And students can respond with a smiley face or a middle face or a frowny face or none at all. Just a note, currently this only works in the web version of Teams and the web version of OneNote, as well as on the student side. We're working to add it to other places like iPad, PC, Mac, etc. in the future. Now what I'll do is I will close the reflect check-in pane and I'm going to distribute this page to my students. So I'll click distribute page, choose this, and now I'm gonna distribute the page and we'll put this into class notes. And I will click distribute. Okay, it's all done. Now we'll switch over to Alex the student who got this page and we'll show how the reflect check-in works. I'm signed in as Ella and I'll go to my class notebook. I'll open it up here and I'm gonna open up my notebook as Ella and go to class notes. Here's the new page, what is a claim? Here's the page my teacher distributed, so we'll scroll to the bottom, and there is that check-in. So how well do you understand what is a claim? So I'll say, I understand that pretty good, I get it. Could change this, maybe I'm like, hmm, I don't get it yet. And then I can submit. Also note it says, who can see it? If I hover, only the teacher can see this reflection. Great, and that's from Kara Coleman, she's the teacher. So we'll submit. Okay, it's submitted. So you can also even change your response. So if I decide, you know what, actually maybe, maybe I get it somewhat, I can go back here and hit submit. So you can change your response as well. Now let's sign back in to Kara, the teacher. I'm signed back in as Kara Coleman, the teacher, and now I'm gonna go to Insights. Every class in Teams has Insights, and what I can do is look at all the different check-ins I've done. So under Class Overview, I can go over to Reflect right here and drill in. Now I can see all the different reflections that have happened in my class. I can scroll down, I can see it by date. I can hover here and see the number of students that we're answering. And I can see different words that were chosen in different questions, the student list. So there's an entire reflect area where you can check out all the different questions that you've captured across your class. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now if you want to keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.